It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you solve your marketing problems and grow your e-commerce business. Cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and advice from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Well, hello and welcome. I'm Chloe and it's great to have you out there listening. In this episode, I'm going to do something a little different. Um, Last November, some you may know, you may not, know that I published a thoroughly updated version of my book, E-commerce Marketing, How to Get Traffic That Buys to Your Website. Since then, it's consistently been the number one e-commerce book on Amazon.co.uk and frequently hits number one positions in the USA and around the world. First off, I guess a huge thank you to all of you who've bought it, read it, reviewed it on Amazon, and of course, used it to help you build your business, because that's why I wrote it. What does that have to do with today's episode? Well, in March, just a couple of weeks ago, the audiobook version finally went live. Why it's taken so long to put it live is a story that's almost as boring to tell as it was frustrating to live through. So I'm not going to bore you with it. Suffice to say, it is at least now available. You can get the audiobook version of e-commerce marketing, how to get traffic that buys to your website on Audible, Amazon, Google Play, Scribd, Apple, iTunes and uh, many other audiobook places. So to celebrate the fact it's finally available and you can all get your hands on it, I'm bringing you a chapter of the self-same audiobook. Yep, in a minute or two, you can hear the whole of part one, the customer master plan model right here on this podcast episode completely for free. And I've picked this section to share with you because I think it's one of the most helpful sections of the book. It takes you through my customer master plan model and how you can use it to improve your marketing. Basically, the model is a way of making sure you're making the right marketing decisions and um, it's easy to follow. And I think, you know, whatever your business is dealing with at the moment or at any point in time, it's going to help you make sure you're doing what you should be for the biggest return. The model works for businesses of all shapes and sizes, so I think you're going to find it very useful too. Now, we're going to get straight into that as soon as we've heard from this episode's sponsors. This podcast is brought to you by Clavio, the growth marketing platform used by more than 30,000 e-commerce brands globally. In uncertain times, supporting your community and fostering relationships by being open and empathic is a strategy that will be appreciated and remembered far beyond today. One of the best channels to deliver these communications through is, and always will be, email. Email marketing is one of Clavio's foundational offerings, and when you leverage personalization driven by customer insight, you will create memorable marketing moments that cultivate lifelong relationships. Clavio truly understands how challenging it is for each and every business right now. Clavio is here to help brands communicate, engage, and foster relationships now and when all of this is just a distant memory. Visit clavio.com forward slash masterplan. That's K L A V I Y O dot com slash masterplan. With SemPro Online from Pitney Bowes, you can simply print postage stamps and shipping labels even when working remotely. For as low as $4.99 a month, you'll get access to special discounts and save up to 40% off USPS Priority Mail. Plus, for being an e-commerce master plan listener, you'll receive a free 30-day trial to get started and a free £10 scale to ensure that you never overpay. That includes being able to schedule package pickups and track shipments from departure to arrival. Go to pb.com com forward slash master plan to access this special offer for a free 30 day trial plus a free 10 pound scale to get started. That's pb.com slash m a s t e r p l a n to experience savings in your shipping costs with a free trial of Sempro Online from Pitney Bowes. Okay, it's time to get stuck into a chapter from my audiobook, e commerce marketing how to get traffic that buys to your website. Part 1. The Customer Master Plan Model The Customer Master Plan Model is the strategy for e-commerce success distilled down into six circles and eight arrows. I'm going to describe it for you now so you can imagine it, but if you'd like a copy of what it looks like, you can download that via ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash free. So along the bottom, there are six circles in a row with arrows in between each one. And the first circle on the far left is called the world, the second circle visitors, third circle inquirers, fourth circle first time buyers, the next one repeat buyers, and then the one after that regular buyers. 
The arrows in between these, of which there are five, are labelled by stage numbers. So the arrow between the world and visitors is called stage one. The arrow between visitors and inquirers is called stage two. The arrow between inquirers and first time buyers is called stage three. The arrow between first time buyers and repeat buyers is called stage four. And the arrow between repeat buyers and regular buyers is called stage five. Then above that, there are three more arrows. There's one arrow from going up high on the page. So if you imagine that the whole piece is created on a landscape orientation, A4 piece of paper or letter size, if you're in the US, and this arrow goes from the top left hand corner of that page down to just above the regular buyer's circle. And that's got a couple of people at the bottom of it. And that arrow going from top left to bottom right signifies that as you move from the left hand side to the right hand side of the model, there are fewer people to talk to. And then there's another arrow going from bottom left to top right that's named CLV. And this one indicates customer lifetime value. And it's a reminder that as you go from the left hand side to the right hand side of the model, whilst the number of people you're talking to may decrease, the value of those people to your business increases. And then stretching across that top of that piece of paper, there is a double ended arrow that's called the conversation. And this is just to remind you that throughout communicating with consumers who are working their way through those stages with your business, you need to keep the conversation consistent. Now, the circles represent the customer relationship levels, the levels each person on the planet has reached in their relationship with your business. Stages one to five, those arrows between the customer relationship levels, are where we should be spending our time to encourage customers to move from one customer relationship level to the next. Marketing has a huge role to play in getting the customers to make the leap from one customer relationship level to the next. In stage one, our aim is to get interested people to your website. The audience we would look at for that, it could be anyone, but those we think might be interested in our products and who haven't been to the website before is how we define it. Stage two, our aim is to get data from visitors and others so you can market to them in stage three. This is mainly going to be about marketing to those who visited your website, but it could also be others but none of them have bought online from you before. That's the critical factor. Stage three, our aim is to get the first purchase where we start making money. Here, our audience is those who haven't bought from us before, but who have visited your site or given you their data. Stage four, the aim is to get the second purchase. So the target is those who've bought once, but not more than once. And then stage five is about getting even more purchases. So our target is those who've bought more than once. Stage one, getting visitors to your website. In every e-commerce business, customer acquisition is a huge marketing focus, usually taking up the majority of resources, which is why there are three stages focused on getting that first sale. Customer acquisition starts with stage one, making people out there in the world aware that your business exists and persuading them to visit your website. With stage one marketing, we're looking to put your message in front of people who've never been to your website and get them to go there. Of course, this activity does often pick up past customers and those who've been to the website before. It's the stage where most marketers spend most of their time and where the marketing options you can use are numerous. This means it's vital to be actively managing and optimizing your existing traffic sources and testing new ones. To make sense of all these options and ideas, stage one is divided into three types of marketing. Shine a light, which is to shine a light on your business and make the world aware you exist. Target customer, to make your target customers aware you exist and encourage them to buy from you. Get found, to make sure that when customers are looking for your products, they find you. Many of the marketing methods used for shine a light and target customer will be the same. They're just used in different ways to put the message in front of a very different audience. I find it helps to think of this marketing breakdown as a target, slowly getting closer to your website as the likelihood of purchase grows. So when the outside ring would be shine a light, the next ring in would be target customer. The closest ring to the website would be get found. You should start by getting the get found activity in place then the target customer marketing, and finally, shine a light. 
The Get Found activity is going to give you the best return on investment and to quickly be profitable. So it's nice to have that running whilst you work on the other areas. Then the target customer activity will probably be more profitable than the Shiner Light, so it makes sense to get that up second. Of course, this order also makes sense because the Shiner Light marketing is going to result in people moving into the target customer audience, and both will create people who want to find your website. The impact of having all three working together is much greater than the individual parts themselves. So if you want to really succeed at getting the right traffic to your website and making sure it's as ready as possible to purchase, then you should be investing in all three of these stage one marketing types. Let's go into them in a bit more detail. Stage one, get found. The get found part of stage one is all about making sure the customers can find you when they're looking for you or your products. The marketing methods you can use in Get Found are pretty limited, which makes this a pretty quick set of marketing to get set up. The marketing methods boil down to, for customers who are looking for your products, Google Ads shopping campaigns, Google Ads keyword ads on the names of your products, Google Ads keyword ads on your product categories, your products for sale in other places they're looking to buy, such as retailers or marketplaces, SEO on your product names and product category names. And for customers looking for your business, Google Ads keyword ads on your business name and SEO on your business name. It's really important to have this in place before you start investing in any other marketing activity, because these are the marketing tactics that make sure that once a customer has decided to buy, they find you. They can't buy from you if they can't find you. Stage one, target customer. The target customer part of stage one is all about putting your message, your brand and your products in front of your target customers. Before you can do this, you need to know who your target customers are and have access to ways to get a message in front of them. Identifying a usable target customer audience might come from modelling your existing customer base, geodemographic targeting or interest-based targeting. For most businesses, this will be a mix of the following. Advertising, articles in magazines, newspapers, TV shows, websites that your target customers read. Inserts in the catalogue mailings or parcels of businesses who have a similar customer base to yours. Advertising on Google Display Network or Facebook to lookalike audiences of your best customers. Working with influencers your target market responds to. Advertising to audiences with the same demographics and interests as your target customers. For a business selling gourmet coffee beans, their initial test list might be something like this. Google Display Network, lookalike audience of existing buyers. Facebook ads, using a lookalike audience of existing buyers and interest targeting of people interested in coffee. Partnerships, with coffee blogs, advertising, affiliates and product review methods. Coffee magazines doing the same things, or even coffee grinder manufacturers. Google Ads keywords on the phrase gourmet coffee beans and social media posts to your followers and utilizing category relevant hashtags like hashtag coffee beans or hashtag gourmet coffee. Not all of these will turn out to be great performers. It takes time to test and optimize to find the methods and audiences that will work best for each business. The right mix will vary from business to business. Stage one, shine a light. The shine a light part of stage one is about putting your message, your brand and your products in front of a huge audience of people, some of whom are your target customers. Why do this? Because some of those people who see it will be potential customers and this might be the only way to reach them. For some businesses, there are very few target customer options, so shine a light will make up the traffic shortfall. It includes many of the same types of marketing that you use for stage one target customers, but here the audience is much larger. Sticking with the gourmet coffee example, their shine a light test list might be something like this. Facebook ads, interested in other gourmet foods, partnerships, foodie blogs rather than coffee blogs for advertising affiliates and product reviews, the same with food magazines, or even going as far as the national press, newspaper, TV, radio. Advertising, testing off the page ads in Sunday supplements. Social media, posts utilizing less relevant hashtags like hashtag foodie or hashtag caffeine addiction. The right mix again will vary from business to business. 
Whether a campaign is target customer or shine a light really depends on who is going to see it. As a rough guide, if more than half of them are very relevant, it's a target customer audience. If less than half, then it's a shine a light one. So whilst testing, you may find approaches that you thought would be target customer are actually shine a light and vice versa. Stage two, creating inquirers. This stage is all about getting data you can use in stage three to get across the right messages to turn the inquirers into first time buyers. Usually the data you're after will be an email address or a web push notification sign up. But if you are actively mailing paper catalogues, then the aim might be to get their postal data so you can send a catalogue to them. It doesn't include getting a follow of your social media accounts because you don't own that data. And on the social media platforms, you are at the mercy of their algorithms as to whether or not your customers see your messages. Getting social media followers is, of course, great, but it's not a stage two activity. Usually this sign up activity happens on your website, but it can happen anywhere in your stores, at events. There are even marketing methods and tactics specifically designed to grow an email database. For example, a viral competition where those who enter the competition would be encouraged to undertake tasks and get others to enter the competition to increase their chances of winning. Or Facebook lead ads where the aim of your advert is to get an email address. Stage three, creating first time buyers. Not everyone you are trying to turn into a first-time buyer will become an inquirer. Some will leapfrog straight from visitor to first-time buyer, and that is just fine. Stage three is all about communicating with those who've been to your website or for whom you have data in order to get them to buy. Marketing methods could include email marketing and or push notifications. So welcome campaigns to explain who your business is, what you sell and build up trust so they're ready to buy. Newsletters, weekly, fortnightly, monthly emails to explain who your business is, what you sell and build up trust so they're ready to buy. Online advertising, using Google Ads Display Network and Facebook ads to target audiences of those who've been to your website but never bought and those who are on your email list but have never bought. Google Keyword Ads, Keyword advertising using remarketing lists for search advertising with an audience of inquirers and site visitors who haven't bought. Stage four, creating repeat buyers, AKA getting purchase number two. As soon as someone's purchased for the first time, your marketing focus switches to getting the second purchase. Of course, that means doing a great job with their first order, but there's also marketing that will help. Email marketing and or push notifications for post-purchase campaigns. Online advertising using Google Display Network and Facebook ads to target audiences who've bought once. Google keyword ads, so keyword advertising using remarketing lists for search advertising with an audience of first time buyers. Stage five, creating regular buyers from repeat buyers. The marketing methods that do this are pretty much exactly the same as for stage four, but the messaging may change to reflect their deeper connection to your business. You want to turn those who've bought twice into regular buyers because it's going to increase their value to you, that all important customer lifetime value, and because there's huge amounts you can learn from the regular buyers to help you improve your stage one performance. In fact, everything you learn from them can be fed back into the model at the beginning to help you recruit better customers to help you bring better quality traffic to the site. They are your very best customers, so you can learn from them by using surveys, customer panels, social media groups, etc. You can also use them to create lookalike audiences for your advertising. They can become great referrers of customers too, so don't forget to ask them to spread the word about your business. Many e-commerce businesses are now recruiting great influencers from their existing passionate customers too. E-commerce master plan is supported by some of the greatest companies in the e-commerce sector. Here's a reminder of who they are. How are the leading D2C brands growing their businesses? They're using Klaviyo, the growth marketing platform chosen by over 30,000 global innovative online brands. Klaviyo believes in supporting growth, which is why they won't tie you into lengthy contracts, hidden setup or support fees or feature based pricing. With a platform that's both powerful and easy to use, it's no surprise so many brands have switched to Klaviyo. Looking for one more compelling reason? Brands switching to Klaviyo see an average of 62 times ROI on their investment. Ready to learn more? 
visit clavio.com forward slash master plan. That's K L A V I Y O dot com slash master plan. With SEMPRO Online from Pitney Bowes, you can simply print postage stamps and shipping labels, even when working remotely. For as low as $4.99 a month, you'll get access to special discounts and save up to 40% off USPS Priority Mail. Plus, for being an e-commerce master plan listener, you'll receive a free 30-day trial to get started and a free £10 scale to ensure that you never overpay. So you can calculate the exact postage online, print from your PC and avoid trips to the post office. Go to pb.com forward slash master plan to access this special offer for a free 30 day trial plus a free £10 scale to get started. That's pb.com slash M A S T E R P L A N to experience savings in your shipping costs with a free trial of SEMPRO Online from Pitney Bowes. How to use the customer master plan model to improve your marketing. The Customer Master Plan is an invaluable tool to help you work out where you should focus your effort for maximum impact. It's hard to work on improving all the stages at once, so you should focus on the one that offers the most opportunity. That's usually the one where your performance is weakest. The model also helps you to think about the problem first and the solution second. To think, we're not doing as well as we should be in stage one, what can we do to fix it? Rather than just thinking we need more Google ads when you're working out where the focus is for the next month or quarter or year. There are two ways to use the customer master plan model to work out where you should focus your marketing efforts. The most perfect one is to analyze the numbers, work out how well each stage is performing to move customers from one customer relationship level to the next. This is complex and time consuming and many businesses don't have easy access to the numbers to do it. If you'd like to take that route, then you can access the full how to for the numbers version via ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash free. I have, however, designed a simpler method that any business can quickly use to identify where they should be focusing their marketing investment, be it time or money. Step one, take a blank sheet of paper, put it portrait in front of you and split it into five stripes. So you've got horizontal lines going across the page to give you five stripes, five boxes. The top box split into three, and then the rest leave as they are. Now those top three boxes are about stage one. So they're your shine a light, target customers and get found, those three that, that go across the page. The next strip down the page is the stage two, turning visitors into inquirers, then stage three, turning inquirers into first time buyers, stage four, creating repeat buyers, and stage five, turning repeat buyers into regular buyers. So that piece of paper now has a box for each of the parts of the customer master plan model. If you want, you can download a template and a completed example at ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash free. Step two, write down what marketing you're doing in each stage of the model in the relevant box. If you have boxes with nothing in them or very little in them, then that's where you're going to need to focus. And I've got a bonus step for you for if you've done this a few times. Next to each marketing activity you've written down, add the month you last optimised it. Go on, be honest. And the most neglected area is almost certainly where you should be focusing. Once you've used this method to identify where you should be focusing, look at what you're already doing in that stage. Is it in need of optimization? If it's working well, can you do more of it? Then look through the book at the other marketing tactics you can use in that stage and test some new ideas. You should be doing this analysis at least quarterly to help you constantly improve your overall business performance. If you find you need to make changes beyond the traffic driving marketing for any stage, then grab yourself a copy of my book, Customer Persuasion, How to Influence Your Customers to Buy More and Why an Ethical Approach Will Always Win. It's where I first introduced the customer master plan model and it includes lots of website, customer service and other things you can do to improve performance in each stage. So that's got you thinking, hasn't it? What boxes aren't you doing enough in? Do you need to do more shine a light? Or is stage four your area of neglect? Well, you've just heard part one 
of e-commerce marketing, how to get traffic that buys to your website. There are a further four parts, which I say are considerably longer than part one. Part two takes you through the core e-commerce marketing methods, each of them in turn. So we cover SEO, email marketing, search engine advertising keywords, as well as search engine advertising products. And then we go into online advertising, audience targeting and social media. Then in part three, we go through six additional marketing methods. And for each marketing method covered in both parts two and three, I take you through who it works best for, how to optimize it, what numbers to measure and lots of tips to make it successful for you. So it's really about working out how to approach those marketing methods. So whether you're doing it yourself or you're briefing an agency, it's going to enable you to make sure you're focusing on the right things, you're using the right marketing methods to hit the right objectives and help you to accelerate how quickly those marketing methods start to work for you. Then in part four, I share my marketing maxims with you. That's a group of theories and tactics that work across all marketing methods, lifting the impact of your marketing and improving your return on investment. So they're pretty cool. And then in part five, we have the customer master plan four week marketing transformation challenge, which is designed to help you quickly turn what you learn in the book into great results. Because it's all well and good listening to an audio book. But if you don't actually do anything with what you learn, what quite frankly is the point? So part five is all about helping you to quickly implement and quickly make a difference. Now you can get the full audio book right now on Audible, via Amazon, on Google Play and on Apple iTunes and also on Scribed. It's called e-commerce marketing, how to get traffic that buys to your website. And it's by me, Chloe Thomas. If you're not yet sure you want to invest in the whole book, then head to ecommercemarketingbook.com to take the free crash course. In next week's episode, I'll be sharing a couple of chapters from the Marketing Maxims session with you. So make sure you've subscribed to the show so you don't miss out on those. I hope you have a great week and do let me know how you get on with your customer master plan. Keep optimising. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast.